will stand as we have our call to worship this morning. We have been using uh, for our Advent season this year the scripture from Isaiah 9, verse 6. So I will read that, and then you will reply with uh, a reading from Revelation 21, 6 through 7, which is in your order of worship and will be on the screen. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. If you'll join me as we sing together, carol number 100, Angels We Have Heard on High. come into this place this morning to worship you. We have come to bow before you, to remember and to celebrate the gift that you gave so long ago. And Father, as the angels proclaimed glory to God in the highest, may we also lift our hearts and our voices today as we sing praises unto you, our creator, 
the one who has created our salvation through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. good morning. We're going to have a, a children's sermon time, but what the children are doing today, they're turning in their Lottie Moon offering. So you guys want to bring your offerings up here. And we're going to get a picture, and then we'll let you leave them there on that front pew again. Just come on over, Brantley. Come on. Anybody you want to come over here? We'll just have the guys on one side and the girls on the other. And then Miss Kayla's going to take a picture so we can get it out there for everyone. All right. <laughs> Come in just a little bit, will you? How's that? Okay, good. Okay, thank you. All right. Let's give them a hand for this. They've raised this up. And I guess you guys can just sit. We've got poinsettias up here, so I'll sit there. I've got something for you. Like I said, oh, oh no. Oh. Yeah, I just spilled all the money. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't the most stable thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We are going to talk just a minute about Lottie Moon. And Lottie Moon, who can tell me who Lottie Moon is? Okay, Delaney. a missionary and she went to China and she told people about Jesus. Right. Anybody else have anything else they want to tell me about? Yes, Olivia. She gave away all her food so the people she worked with could get by. That's right. Actually, that's Lottie Moon died by giving, she, she was so concerned that people around her were starving and she gave away her food and actually she starved to death. But that she did that all because of her love. The, the verse that she liked was, she said, John 15, 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And that's a good verse. Love other people just the way Jesus loves us. And so one of the things she did, and I didn't know this, well, Lottie Moon came from a pretty big family. She had six brothers and sisters. Does anybody know where she lived? You know where she lived? Melissa? Nope, she lived in Georgia. Lottie Moon is from this state. She lived in Georgia. And so one of her other sisters was a missionary to China. And that's how she became interested in China. And that's why she went to China. And one of the things that she did, she would, she was, they were afraid of her. She was just a foreigner. But she wanted to tell them about Jesus. And she wanted to tell them the love of Jesus but they were afraid of her. But the kids would come, but they wouldn't, they, she couldn't talk to them. And so she started passing out cookies. And at first, they wouldn't even eat the cookies. They were afraid she would poison her. But and later on, one of the little boys, it's always a little boy, right? <laughs> he ate the cookie. And after that, she would always bring them cookies. And so I've even, we, Elaine helped me prepare this. We've even included the recipe for the cookies on the back. But what I actually did was I got Oreos. Because I think they would have been Oreos, but they probably didn't have them right then. So if you can eat an Oreo, I'm going to give you a gift of an Oreo. Actually, two, because they're the thin ones. Yeah, they're the thin ones. But I gave you two. <laughs> Levi said, these are the thin ones. <laughs> You got two, you got two. So, so can, can you think about what you guys would do if you were going to be missionaries? Because we're all called to be missionaries. What could you do? She gave away cookies to tell people about Jesus. What could you do? <laughs> okay. Levi says he'll give away money. That could probably get a few people. Well, you could also give them a cookie. Or just, you know, just be a friend. You can be a missionary right here in our neighborhood. Is that right? Can you think of anything else you could do to be a missionary and to help support missionaries? Um, maybe go to the offering. How about that? You guys can take up an offering just like you did this year. So that's good. So I encourage each of you to, 
be a missionary. And why do you want to be a missionary? What was what was it that prompted her to be a missionary? And what was it the verse, the command that Jesus gave to us? He said, what did he say? Love. We, we need to love others because Jesus loved us. That's right. Well, let's let's go ahead and, and bow our heads and let's have a prayer. Father, we just are so thankful. We're thankful for all the missionaries of like Lottie Moon. They show the love of Jesus daily. And Father, we know that each one of us can do that too. We can also show the love of Jesus daily. And I just thank you for these boys and girls, these RAs and GAs, and the fact that they just love you. And I'm praying that even some of them will go out and be missionaries and just uh, uh, carry the word, the gospel word around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you go, let me give you an activity sheet. Okay. And we'll you'll be dismissed whenever we're done here. And like I said, you know, Oreo cookies are good. Colossians 1, 15 through 17. He is the image of the visible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist.
Our offertory carol this morning is number 88. Number 88, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King. Would you stand, please? take your Bibles if you haven't already and turn to Colossians chapter 1 and we're going to look at verses 15 through 17 as we talk about the preeminent Christ. You know today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. It's hard to believe really. I mean you know we've had so much turmoil if you will this year. Nevertheless once we hit December it seems like it has just just flown by as it always does and today we're already celebrating Advent Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day this coming week today as I said we're looking at the preeminent Christ preeminent means above all others again Christ is much much more than just a little baby in the manger and I love it that we had Hark the Herald Angel. The hymns teach solid theology. If you listen to every one of those verses, you understood Christ is the preeminent deity. He is God. However, in this 
post-Christian world that we live in, this 21st century, the attack upon the Christian faith, it never seems to end. Let me give you an example of the hostility towards Christmas. And this is a news article. Many of you probably saw it. I just want to highlight it. It was from December 11th, 2020. A Raleigh Homeowners Association told a couple that the cross in their front yard was a violation because the cross shares no connection with Christmas. James Faison and his wife, who lived in North Carolina community for five years, decided to put up a six-foot cross this Christmas. The local HOA, the dreaded HOA, requested that the family take it down because they said this is not a Christmas decoration. They told them if they wanted to put it up at Easter, they could put it up at Easter, but it was not Christmas. The board believes, this is what they said, the board believes that the Bible is very clear on the distinction between those two major events. I would just say, where does it say in the Bible Easter? Where does it say in the Bible Christmas? It doesn't. What is wrong with these people? The Faisons, they went ahead and said they were going to, they, they said they were going to, pay, they told them they would have to pay a fine. And so they told them, listen, here's all of the, Bible verses. Here's all the scripture that connects everything. You do what you have to do. And it says that as of December 11th, they were still had it under review. Okay. I went into a store this week. The young lady there said, happy holidays. And, you know, I just looked at her and I said, Merry Christmas and smiled. She goes, that's the way I feel. But the store management told me not to offend anyone. I'm going, really? I am tired of political correctness. Is anyone else with me? I am tired of political correctness. Jesus Christ is more than a little baby in the manger, and Christmas is certainly more than just a happy holiday. Christmas is about the incarnation of the Lord. It's when God the Son came to earth and he came so he could walk among us. He came so that he could die for our sins. He came to do that so that what? That he would make it possible for those who would believe in him to have eternal life. Christmas is about the cross. Yes, it is. Christmas is about Christ. Christmas is about the Creator. Christmas is about the Savior. Christmas is about the Sustainer of life. And yes, Christmas, most importantly, is about our Emmanuel, God with us, the preeminent Christ. The first thing that we're going to look at today is the deity of Christ. The deity of Christ. Verse number 15 he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. You see, the world says there are many ways to God. That's what the world wants to tell us. They'll say whether you follow Buddha, Muhammad, maybe you want to follow just a false, uh, not only those false religions, but maybe you want to follow a cult a false cult that maybe even mentions Christ, but it still doesn't believe as the Bible teaches. Take any false religion. Take any cult. And all of them have rules that you must follow in order to get to God. All of them. Only Christianity is all be what? The work of Christ. Our faith in Christ. That's all it requires. It doesn't require us to do this or that. We can simply uh, come to God through the man, Christ Jesus. And we'll examine that in a moment. But Jesus said this in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. That is the exclusivity of Christianity. No works, only the shed blood of Jesus Christ. 
That is what brings men salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not works, lest any man should boast. That's what we have, the faith in Jesus Christ. Christ is the only way to God. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. It says in this verse, he is the what? He is the image. That word is icon in the Greek, and it means the exact likeness. It means the very person of God. He is the image of what? Of the invisible God. It means that the passage is telling us Jesus Christ is the perfect image or revelation of God. God, the Father, is unseen. He is the invisible. However, Jesus Christ came he, in the incarnation. He came to earth. He walked among us. He is the one who reveals God to us. The impact of this truth, oh, my friends, it is explosive, the repercussions that it has. The fact destroys all the false teachings concerning Christ, and it reveals God to man. Jesus Christ, who lived and he walked among us here on planet Earth, is the express image of God. He is the very Lord of the universe. John chapter 10, verse 30. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. That's very significant. God is not out there somewhere in outer space. God is not separated uh, through a host of intermediaries. We don't have to go to God through anyone except through Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2, 5, for there is one God, one mediator between God and men, and that is the man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is God the Son, and he came to earth, and he lived as a man among us, and no one has ever done that. No one has ever done that. No one has ever made that claim. God walked among us as a man, and he was the man, Jesus Christ. First, or John 1, 14. John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The only begotten. Let's talk about that for just a moment. That is, in the Greek, the monogenes, literally one set of genes. What it's talking about is the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. It is unique because they are the same stock. It is never to be understood that Christ was born in the traditional sense as a son of God. We need to understand that. He was not born as a little baby as God's son. Only, only in his humanity was he born. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He had no earthly father. It means he has always existed. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the God hyphen man, fully God, fully man. And the proper way to think of Christ coming to the earth is, like I said, the incarnation. That literally means the act of assuming flesh. That is the deity, God the Son, assumed flesh. The eternal God the Son assumed human flesh. But in all aspects, he was a man, but also at the same time, in all aspects, he still was God. And that means that he was never, he never sinned. He was a man who walked among us, but he also never sinned because he was a God-man. In Hebrews 4, 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus Christ identified with humanity. He came in the incarnation. He walked among us. He lived a sinless life. And he was put to death for crimes he did not commit. And that was because he was going to offer himself as the atonement for all sin. He was the perfect Lamb of God. And his shed blood brings eternal life to all who believe. Now. 
Let me go back to that HOA in North Carolina. Do you realize how ridiculous it is to tell people they can't put up a cross at Christmas? Wow. Jesus Christ came with a mission. And that mission was what? To go to the cross and purchase with his blood salvation for all who would believe. John 3, 16, say that with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ is above all things. It says here, the firstborn over creation. But let us be clear. That word firstborn does not mean that Jesus Christ was the first created being. We've already covered that, but let's make it even more clear. He was incarnated. He assumed that human flesh. He was not born in the traditional sense of an earthly father and mother. It means he was what? Superior. It means he was supreme. It means he's preeminent over all. Why? Because Jesus Christ has always existed. Before the creation, he existed. He was God the Son. He's part of the Godhead, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all of them existing before anything was created. That means that all creation is what? His heritage, because he is the creator. And that's the second thing we want to examine. Christ is the creator. Verse number 16, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Christ created all things. By him, it says. That literally, that phrase means in him. Creation took place within Christ. Creation took place within the very being of God, that is Christ. The heart of Christ desired the world. The will of Christ destined the world. The word of Christ was spoken and created the world. The universe exists because of Christ and because of him alone. Again, I turn to John chapter 1, where in verse 3 it says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Here, again, the Apostle Paul is writing, All things were created. That means collectively. Collectively, everything within the universe was created by him. And not only collectively, but individually. That is, every single detail was created by God. Creation, folks, was a historical event. It's something that actually took place. Jesus Christ created the universe. He created what we live in. This world that we, that we are just a small part of, this universe that we're just a small part of, there was a definite time and place when Christ spoke the word and all things in their intricate detail came into being. And I'm telling you that is extremely important because it means that all creation belongs to him. Now I want you to think with me what is being said in this verse. If there are other worlds in space that have living beings on them, Christ created them. Do you understand that? It says he created everything in the whole universe. If there are invisible worlds, in other words, we're talking of other dimensions and there are beings in those dimensions, Christ created them. It doesn't matter whether they are thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, 
Christ created them. That's why the Word of God, you see, clashes so much with the modern post-Christian world. Let me just take two examples, and I'm not going to really go into them, but just talk about them very quickly. We're told that, that man-made global warming is destroying the planet, and we're told that everything just evolved. It took millions of years, but everything just evolved. It wasn't created. There's no creator. It just happened. Understand something. God's word tells us he made everything. It didn't evolve. God created everything. Therefore, if he created it, he is in control, not man. And that's the second point there with the, the man-made global warming. Now, I don't want anyone to misunderstand me. Man, all of us. All of us are supposed to be good stewards of this earth. I understand that. However, I would never elevate man to a place where he can control the destiny of this world or any other. Because man does not. God does. God does. Christ created all things for himself. And that's what it says. All things were created through him and for him. Now question, why is sinful man trying to take God out of everything? Why is he doing that? Why does he want to just relegate Christ to just a baby in a manger? Why? I'm telling you this because if Christ created all things for himself, as the Bible says, then all of creation should praise him, honor him, Worship and serve him because he is the creator. Why? Because all of creation owes its existence to the creator. It's sinful man and it's a rebellion against God that, that wants to do what? Quash everything that gives praise and honor to God. However, the proper perspective is for creation. And I'm talking all of creation to praise Honor, worship, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in Colossians 1, 19 and 20, it says, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Third, Christ is before all things. Look at verse number 17. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Jesus Christ is before all things. Before the, the first, you name it, was ever created. And we have a detail of that in Genesis, by the way. But before anything was created, the animals, the the plants, the very world that we live in. Before anything was created, Christ already exists. And we need to understand that. He was already there. Christ is not some created being. He is the creator. There was nothing in the universe before God spoke it into existence. Before the beginning of time, Christ existed. The Godhead, the triune Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That is the only eternal things in the whole universe. The Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they alone are eternal. Those who want to make Christmas uh, about a little baby in a manger... Uh, the same people that would say Jesus was just a good teacher. Or maybe someone says, well, Jesus is just one of many ways to God. According to God's word, Jesus Christ is preeminent over all. Someone should say amen to that. Nothing is superior to Christ. Certainly not Mother Earth. Christ is the creator. Christ is the sustainer. He is the ruler of all. And not only that, but Christ holds all things together. 
and in him all things consist. It's been said that Jesus Christ is the principle of cohesion in the universe. From nothing he spoke into existence the universe. Ex nihilo. Out of nothing he spoke and the universe came into being. However, more than that, not only did he speak it and it's there, he holds it all together. Now think with me for a moment. If the axis of the earth were changed by one degree, what would happen to this planet? It would no longer be habitable to man. You couldn't live here. One degree. The moon is just the correct distance from the earth, and the earth is moving at just the correct speed as it's going through the universe, and it's rotating, and everything is in this elliptical orbit. And if it didn't happen that way, we wouldn't have the ocean tides, we wouldn't have the seas held in check, we would just be one huge water world planet. Going on and on and on, that all of the scientific laws, they're nothing more than divine laws. Nothing happens in the universe by chance. Without Jesus Christ, this universe would literally fly apart. Hebrews 1.3. This is an interesting thing, not often quoted, but I, I, I want to highlight it. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, sounds just like he was being written here in Colossians. One of the reasons I think Paul wrote Hebrews, but anyway, we'll go on. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Again, do you hear that? Being the brightness of the glory, being the express image of his person, being God, and upholding all things by his word of his power. What does it say happened? When he had himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand on the majesty of high. That's Jesus Christ. That is God. The preeminent Christ. Oh, the world wants to, to celebrate Christmas holiday, but they want to do it without Christ. They want to take Christ out of it. Just a holiday. And Christians, you know, we can, do, we can talk about it, but it's got to be just confined to a baby in a manger. Start talking about a cross and you're in trouble. I would say that we're probably free to do whatever we want with inside the church. It's in the confines of the four walls. But listen to me. Each born-again believer, you are the church. And so the church doesn't just exist inside of these four walls. We are everywhere. We are in the world. We're in wherever we're going to school, wherever we're working, whatever we're doing. We are the church. And the body of Christ, the church, exists to do what? Worship and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the eternal God. He's God the Son. He's eternal. He is the one that reveals God to man. He is God, and when we look at Christ, then we see God. And therefore, when we think of the true meaning of Christmas, we know that Jesus Christ is God the Son, and he came to earth to be our Savior. Please bow your heads. Please close your eyes and prepare for our time of invitation. You see, Christ came to make a way for sinful man to be restored to God. And Jesus Christ is returning soon to abolish sin once and for all. And at that time, we're going to live in a new perfect universe. And it's all because of that first Christmas that those who are born again will exist eternally exist in perfection and exist in communion with God forever. Therefore, the preeminent Christ, that is the meaning of Christmas. That's the true meaning. How will you react to Christ today? How will you? He is the Christ of Christmas. How will you react to him? Will you embrace him as, the, as your Lord and Savior? Maybe you need to rededicate your life to him. 
This invitation is open. He waits for you to respond to his call. Now the altar is open, and if you want to come and pray, I invite you to do just that. Because of precautions that we're taking at this time, I would ask that other decisions be shared with me after the service. But now is the time to respond. Now is the time to respond to the preeminent Lord and Savior. Father, as we have this time together, may those who have listened to your word that need to respond, may they respond right now. I pray that in Jesus' name. stand as we sing together carol 106 carol 106 infant holy infant lowly Check out in the Welcome Center. There's Christmas cards from other church members. So check them there and pick them up because this Friday is Christmas. We will be here on Christmas Eve at 530. Thank you. If you'll join me as we say our benediction together from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us that your ways may be known upon the earth your salvation among all nations.